And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Coin Republic podcast. My name is Shorab Acharya. See, the age-old question, centralized versus decentralized financial ecosystem. What is more profitable? What is more safe? Well, chances are you're either a non-investor uh, trying to get crypto literacy down your bloodstream or you are an investor you still ought to get educated and learn about different ecosystems in the blockchain well you're in luck because today i'm going to try to take you down a trip on the memory lane okay let's go back to 2017 kick ico was launched to create a safer means of raising capital for enterprises in the blockchain sector and to open the first that safer new channel to a community of investors in the first 2 years kick ico platform had played a key role in helping over get this 35 startups to raise over 800,000 ethers. That's a huge number. Uh, but, you know, uh, ICOs uh, have vanished in the 2017 era and the IEOs have been still labeled as scam because of lack of transparency. But today I have the man himself with us, Mr. Anti Danilovsky. <laughs> Cut me some slack over there. But still, <laughs> he is the founder and CEO of the Kick Ecosystem. Today, we will try to have an extensive discussion, not only on his venture, but the ideas surrounding around his venture. Welcome to the show. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, hi, all. Nice to meet you. So so you're to, yeah, yeah you're joining to... us from where, where are you joining? Where are you at right now? Uh, I live in be between Dubai and Moscow. At the moment, I'm in Moscow. Fantastic. So, I mean, how's the day treating you right now? I mean, how's the business going? Brief us a little about on the green. Oh, very fast, very fast. We have so, so many things in development and we're working mm -hmm. all the day and night. A lot of things to come. Fantastic. It seems quite lit up for you guys uh, right now. Let, let's, let's start with a couple of questions uh, that that we really, really need to address right away, right? And as, as you have been a part of uh, this ecosystem since 2017, starting with Kick ICO, how do you see today's time when compared to 2017? How matures, matured is the market acting now as the strong community that it is building around globally? With respect to the opportunities which are growing endless now, what was the major takeaway from the ICO age, if you want to put it that way. Um, okay, actually, everybody expected that uh, ICO would die and demand would shrink, and uh, there won't be any demand for fundraising for ICO and like this. But uh, as I see, it still still works. ICO is still going, and still companies companies raising money. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there were uh, IO. Which, which was very, very bad for reputation of, again, for reputation of tokenized fundraising. It was total disaster. Um, now we, we can see IDO, decentralized token offerings and many tokens. They are raising a lot of funds uh, on IDO. And personally, I think it's, uh, it's not good. It's really not good because most of those campaigns, they're anonymous uh, and they're going to vanish. Mm. A lot of people will lose money again. Mm. So they lose money on ICO, on IEO, and they're going to lose money on IDO. So do you think it's transparency crazy. is at the core here? Transparency yes. needs to be there. So what, what do you yes. think is more uh, safer out, out of the lot? IEO, IDOs, ICOs? Yeah, actually, actually, there are two things that I believe in. Uh, first is I, uh, AIO. It's auction-based uh, initial offerings, mm -hmm. uh, which we relaunched at KKCO not long ago. We have two small starting campaigns there. They are raising money. It works pretty well because they, they are small, small startups with no marketing budget at all, and they're still raising uh, some money. Uh, the key point of uh, AIO is that it's auction. Uh, people make bets and they form the price 
during, during the fundraising campaign. So when token comes to the exchange, uh, price will not decrease because it's formed before on during the token sale. So right. I believe in this. Yeah, I believe in this system, and we're going to promote it. And KKCO was reworked, revamped from the scratch. Now it's new platform on, in all the system, uh, linked with KKX exchange, and they work in combo. And mean, the I'm second, a, yep. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I must say, I mean, with all of the points in mind, you are you're an active play, player in changing the history, the transparency of it all, uh, because you're you're a veteran. Right, you're a veteran yeah. in this in this particular game. Maybe if you change the history for for good, maybe Warren Buffett would switch over from IPO <laughs> to this. <laughs> he would change it. Right. Yeah, there you go. Who uh, no, knows, uh, Red Ryan? We were, uh, you know, KKCO was a platform for ICO, and we made it before the ICO hype, and we we raised funds uh, for KKCO on KKCO. <laughs> we had two fundraising campaigns on our own platform. So, and for IO, I think it's a future. We will try to promote it and uh, try to spread the word. And second thing, I think uh, it still is a security token offerings. And STO is, I believe STO is still the future of real business. Not of meme tokens, not of some IDO campaigns, but of a real business like oil, maybe gold, platinum. And uh, in Russia, we have a big, big guy, oligarch, uh, if and he's waiting for regulations in Russia. I will talk about this a bit later. Uh, so STO uh, will come to Russia very soon. Uh, actually, we have a laws. So I will come. We'll tell a bit about it. Uh, we have laws in Russia. Legalized it. Uh, STO is already legalized in Russia. Now we, we are waiting for licensing. Two mm -hmm. license gonna appear in Russia until end of this year gonna be exchange uh, security operator and each, each uh, uh, digital asset issue operator. Hmm. Uh, so real business will tokenize that business and sell tokens as shares of the companies and it's gonna be the government? By, yeah, yes, it's government. So related. hold on, I, I really do wanna ask a follow-up question on this. See, there are certain countries we are seeing like China being stricter, stricter on crypto. El Salvador made it a, made it a legal token yeah. recently. <laughs> now, a lot of India trying to capitalize. I don't know how they're going to do it. God knows. But they're trying to you know, do something. But yeah. I, when I look at Putin, of course, I don't want to, I don't want to put you in, in the spot right now. <laughs> I don't want to say anything politically incorrect. But I want to say, I mean, when we visualize something like with Putin, maybe we, I say maybe he is in bed with crypto. Maybe he's, he's not. not. He's so mysterious. Yeah, he is he's not. not? Good. He's not bad. He's not bad. He's not not good. He's very very colorful, and he's smart guy, a smart person, a guy already. Uh, so he is looking at crypto. Uh, he understands that um, in Russia we have a very bad situation with uh, venture capital. Like in the United States, you create a small startup and bam, you have millions of dollars coming mm -hmm. in. In Russia, we don't have it. So startup industry and uh, new project industry is uh, pretty suck in Russia. Uh, and uh, recognizing it and allowing them to raise funds that, um, via STO is a really big step forward for all Russian economy. So it already made, it already in force. We are waiting just when when, when, when will it be implemented properly? Uh, STO and digital asset regulations were implemented uh, almost a year ago already. They came, came in force uh, 1st January this year uh -huh. already. And now we are waiting for licensing uh, until end of this year. So crypto gonna boom in Russia, and uh, especially in mean of uh, security tokenizing. Uh, about crypto like uh, payment methods, it's not going to happen, uh, but crypto is a property. So you can buy, you can sell crypto, you will be able to buy and sell crypto in Russia, it's gonna be illegal. But of course you cannot pay Bitcoin in McDonald's, not yet. But so, maybe in future, there is a chance that it will happen. So, so there, there would be trading restrictions, you say, but people, people could do the rest of the things in Russia with, with crypto. Actually, there are talks that um, you can even buy uh, like property like uh, home or something if you have uh, uh, a special contract 
like mm. special contracts for buying in crypto. It's, uh, it's still in talks. Nobody knows how it's going to happen, how, what will happen about it, but there is a good chance that it will be uh, like a barter, like a barter thing, like you give Bitcoin and receive a house or like this. Fair enough, fair enough. So uh, let, let, let's say, since Kiko, Kik Ecosystem's uh, vision is to provide services that individuals and businesses need, can you share some more light like, on those features and how are you scale into your future expansion? Uh, okay, uh, as you know, Kik ICO was just a platform for ICO. And uh, it, it's been pretty obvious that uh, ICO, a lot of ICO are scam. And a mm-hmm. lot of them will die. And even, even if they weren't scam, for, for instance, if you take venture business, if you take uh, 10 startups, one startup will survive, uh, nine will die. Mm. So it's, it's, it's normal. It's mm. not, not all I see other scams. Uh, they were, a lot of them were just good startups, but they couldn't uh, deliver, couldn't survive and like this. Mm. So they planned to uh, evolve into something b- bigger. It's currently it's, uh, an exchange, it's about apps coming soon, uh, it's fundraising platform, it's B2B, like KickRef, uh, referral system that works like charm. B2B referrals, fantastic. It, it's gonna be, gonna be, because uh, all our products are B2C and B2B, if, mm-hmm. if or when we ca- uh, get clients who want an exchange or government who want an exchange, uh, it's possible to provide them a broker broker solution. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's int- actually it's, it's interesting topics, yeah. that you mentioned B2B versus B2C. What do you think as a company at, at this stage is more profitable for you guys, B2B or B2C refer- like referrals? Uh, sorry, sorry. Could you repeat this again? I said B2B. You said B2B. Yeah, yeah. And B two B system in your you know uh, you know if you want to put it into perspective according to your company. Which is mm-hmm. more profitable for you right now? Uh, we, don't, we do not have B2B uh, active at the moment. We don't have B2B partners. We have only B2C. So I, it's hard to answer to your question. But uh, if we uh, spread our B2B to many, many clients or countries, it's going to be more, much, much more profitable, way more profitable than B2C. Fantastic. Because it's it, it, it's cumulative, it's leverage uh, effectiveness. Like we provide uh, an exchange to the Montenegro country, and they have shared liquidity. And uh, the more clients, the more users we're gonna have, the more uh, profits for everybody. And for Montenegro, for Russian broker, for Estonian broker, like this. Yeah. It's like you, you, you do not only have an ecosystem approach. You, I, I presume you also have mobile super apps. Could you extend on that yeah. a little bit? Now, uh, does that mean that every single like, uh, particular service, individual service is going to have a dedicated app? Or are you, are you coming up with those? No, it, it's all in one. It's all in one. All in one. In, ecosystem. In, in one. Yeah. Yes, it's ecosystem approach. So you don't need to install 10 applications. You have everything in one application. Uh, like it's a wallet, uh, your crypto portfolio, it's your exchange, uh, fundraising, iOS on the platform, payments method later, and a lot of different things that uh, people look for in mobile. And a lot of many things that I, I, I'm not going to tell because it's not how, but it's going to be interesting. So Mr. Dan Vygotsky, it's an interesting question though, because you, know, you mentioned ICOs and a lot of scammy part uh, within the, the, the ecosystem, there are a lot of the other key ecosystems that are not quite transparent enough. Uh, the initial investors, people are starting uh, investing in crypto, you know, or trying to learn about it. How, how could you identify that? How could you trust somebody? Uh, of course, you could answer it from your perspective as well as your business's perspective as well. Yeah. Uh, how, how people can trust in crypto or in uh, business or where they invest? Yeah. Uh, hmm. It's a good question. Uh, they, they have to do a research uh, about trust. Do not trust. <laughs> <laughs> You're the most do transparent not, guy yeah. in the industry. Do not trust anyone because you never know what is going to happen with startup, especially if it's startup. Yeah. It's unpredictable because 
it can work like in El Salvador and you buy the currency, for instance, and uh, next month we say, okay, you know, it didn't work and we cancel everything and now it's not allowed. Uh, a lot of things are not dependent on, on this business or on startups. So a lot of things affect crypto and crypto world. So uh, there is a good rule for crypto. Do not invest uh, money that are not um, spare money, not your spare money. Invest only what you can allow yourself to lose. Do but not you, sell your flat, do not sell your flat, do not sell your car and do not invest in, in some tokens. Yeah, yeah, I know a lot of people money. take it as a gamble though. Yeah, that is so true. But you, you seem to be like, you, you, you prefer Ethereum, Ethers over Bitcoin. I want to I wanna get your perspective on that. Why though? I mean, people even think that Dogecoin is a thing really. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, as I believe, as I think, uh, each product, each token, each currency should have a real use case. Dogecoin, they don't have use case. It's just a pump and dump token, coin, from my perspective. They're just meme coin, meme token, whatever. Uh, Ethereum, a lot of business built on Ethereum, a lot of DEX built on Ethereum. They have a lot of use case uh, you can pay and like this, so it's pretty safe. Uh, about, about the future of Ethereum, I believe in Ethereum. I really believe in Ethereum because I, I understand what Ethereum tool, tool gonna be and it's gonna be a huge, huge step forward. And maybe it will overcome other throw Bitcoin. It's very, very possible actually because it's gonna be next level of blockchain. And I'm mm. waiting, really, really waiting for, for it. Yeah. And it seems a little bit more safer as well compared to Bitcoin or like Dogecoin. Okay, it's been a, it's been a year since uh, the launch of KickX. To what extent do you think it has been able to fulfill its promise of leading its way in the open and trustworthy token finance? Okay, uh, we're working on it. And we are doing a legal business. It's very important that we are licensed, we are connected with regulators, we do KIC and like this. So we are very, very uh, transparent, I, I think, transparent. So exchange is growing, it's growing every day. Uh, mm-hmm. Every day we, we, we are having more and more customers without even marketing because we are not ready for marketing yet. Uh, I don't believe that we're gonna, we should do marketing un, unless we launch it our applications, uh, iOS and Android, because 75%, about 75% of our customers, they come from mobile. So as soon as we launch uh, our mobile versions, we're gonna start marketing. And we will not, not lose uh, users who come from mobile and they see mobile version, it's not an app and it's oh, no, 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 it's uh, not interesting. Okay, so wait. this, yeah, yeah. Go, I, I will finish it. Yeah, yeah. So on, on first, first jewelry gonna be a big um, transformation of evolution of kick token into defl- deflationary model. It's gonna be deflationary token, and uh-huh. as we know, exchange tokens are sooner or later exchange token are women. Deflationary tokens is a very interesting concept that I invented many years ago, and we were coming to this day, but surprisingly. Uh, Saifun and Shiba, they did it before. <laughs> it's, yeah. so it's really surprising, but the date was uh, appointed long, long ago by me. That's so why, that's why they call fun. it a money Lego. Anything can happen in this industry. Yes, it's, it's really yeah. fun because we had a plan for our token to spread it like cheap and then start burning it and turn on deflationary model. And Fair now enough. we see good use cases and it's very popular. And so imagine a combination of exchange token plus a deflationary model token plus staking and build, building. So it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be very, very nice to have it. It is gonna be very, very yeah. nice. Not, right. not a financial advice. <laughs> All right, okay, kick token has, uh, although I'm going to become hyper deflationary, you know, following up on that question, a token has become a hyper deflationary uh, DeFi protocol. To what extent do you uh, foresee the deflationary model of the cake token benefiting its holders, particularly the deflationary one? Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, so far, cake token was uh, and quite an opposite. It was inflationary token. 
There were additional missions where we were spreading tokens amongst users to create and kind of big community. Okay, now we did it, and now things gonna gonna change. So now they're gonna be deflationary token. Each transaction burns five percent of stamp tokens, and five percent gonna be um, redistributed amongst holders. So mm. it's for, for long-term holders. It's a very very nice thing because. For instance, yesterday we have five thousand dollars in transactions. Maybe, maybe more. Maybe it's been about six hundred thousand dollars or seven hundred thousand dollars. So imagine a five person distributed just in one day amongst all holders. So it's very, very mm. good for 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 big holders and a lot of alt 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 timers. <laughs> And some of their PPCO, they, they bought later, later, and they bought more, more, more. So they have uh, some good good pile of tokens. So they're going to uh, benefit very well from uh, staking. Fantastic. I mean, I, I mean, I, I do have a sort of a embedded question in this as well. What's your views on stable coins? Because we're talking about inflation, deflation, hyperflation. Stable coin is the debatable keyword. What's your views uh, on that? They, they, they are very useful and they are necessary for crypto market because it's a safe place to stay when Bitcoin going, goes down or, or Ethereum goes down. You need to hedge your risk somewhere. So stable coins are very nice thing and very, very right thing. Uh, and I, 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 I see trends that governments gonna do their stable coins. Mm -hmm. uh, in Russia, it's not blockchain. <laughs> Mm -hmm. in, Russia, in Russia, we already have a project of stable, stable rubble like this. It's crypto rubble, but it's not blockchain. It's crypto. It's like electronic money, not not a concept at all. Is uh, is mining a thing in Russia? Like, do a lot of people mine at least in Russia? Uh, a lot. I, I think I think Russia is on the third place in the world by mining powers because Russia is very very big. We have a lot of power. We have a lot of cheap power, like in Vladivostok or Novosibirsk, so very far from Moscow, of course. Um, okay. Yeah, Splendid. Splendid. The roadmap, though, seems to be quite promising. I mean, I mean, from from a perspective that, that's not uh, directly a part of your team, uh, from a spectator's point of view, it's promising. Can you can you give us an insight into the Kick Mobile Super App and the cake blockchain because uh, I want to, I want to get inside and what, see what, what's going on in fr from, from that end. Of course, not, you don't need to give like extra details. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, about super app, I, I already told you, but uh, okay. Some insight. Uh, when I've been living to Asia, I've seen many, many super apps like, like grab. If you yeah. do know Gra grab yeah. uh, in grab, you can, uh, Get taxi, get delivery, food. Uh, I don't know tickets to cinema. D different country, different uh, abilities. Like in Dubai, you, in Dubai you, there's also Grab, but you can order food, or you can do some something else on Grab, just taxi and car. But in Asia, Grab is crazy. You can do everything in one app. So Kick Super App is gonna be something like this, it's like a Grab or crypto. And it's going to be worldwide, right? And you're going to be launching in yeah. India as well. Yeah, of course. I, I don't see any. Of course, not, not United States and not Canada yet. And not China, because in China, crypto, crypto applications are not yeah, allowed. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but in China, it could be limited like a portfolio or like like a trader, same as top trader, where, where you can watch crypto and you can, still can use this app. But some funcio functionality will be disabled. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe same one gonna be with uh, United States. Uh, mm -hmm. Like uh, if I install Coinbase in Russia, I can use it, but I cannot buy or sell crypto because it tells me that uh, it's not allowed in Russia yet. Mm -hmm. So the trap will gonna work the same way. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's interesting that we have been talking about this particular issue because, I mean, you, you mentioned multiple countries. You mentioned Dubai, you're living in right now. Uh, you know, you're from Russia. You have that global mindset as well. You're, you're a veteran in the game. That's why I'm asking you this, the, the, the global perspective question because, you know, various yeah, countries, I'm going to extend on that again, <laughs> you know, it's so confusing. Certain countries are adapting it as a legal tender. <laughs> countries are, and, you know, various countries have regulations. You know, like they're, they're making their custom crypto world, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, I understand the laws and regulations are to be aided by uh, keeping in, this in mind. How, how, is, how is crypto eco planning to widen its reach? Uh, what, what are the regions you're aiming at? I mean, specifically, I'm talking about let's say the quote unquote untapped market like India, I presume is still an untapped market to certain extent. Yes. Yes. That's right. And uh, I, I see, I travel a lot. I talk to uh, a lot of people and uh, I meet with governments of small countries. I didn't meet with Putin or with uh, Biden, not yet, might be in the future, <laughs> but I meet. I mean a lot of government representatives uh, while I travel or different countries. So uh, just yesterday, uh, one of Europe Union countries, pretty, pretty famous for money and investments, they came to me and uh, offered me to participate in crypto regulations creation because they have crypto not regulated. They look around, they understand that uh, crypto is, is hot and uh, there is a lot of money and business operation them. Mm -hmm. Business uh, located in this country, they pressing them to uh, uh, regulate crypto. Mm -hmm. so, may so maybe if it's going to be interesting for us for business and we if we will get some unique preferences for this country, I will travel there and uh, work on regulations with government of this country. Mm -hmm. uh, so about about. Um, Priorities like what is priority for us uh, as our countries? You know, of course, it's United States, but it's very expensive. And it's not difficult, but crazy expensive. You know what's going to work for you? If you, if, uh, you, if you go to Putin and get endorsement, like if he gets endorsing your brand, <laughs> that would be uh, good. Uh, Russia, Russia, Russia is going to be fine, but not as headquarters. Uh, for crypto business because it's still very, very like walking on the edge. Uh, mm. So, so we, we are not uh, legalized in Russia. Our currency is in Estonia. We are looking for United mm. States to Ukraine. Operate. What about Ukraine? No, 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 no. <laughs> of course, we work with Ukraine. Ukraine users can use KKX, they can use KKSO because. Uh, uh, we work on the, under uh, Estonian and European Union. Like what about other countries, Azerbaijan and all those those countries? Uh, which countries you know, talk about? Yeah, near the the reason like like the Azerbaijan near Russia, no, the, those those in the European area, Central Asian countries. Yeah, it's very, you also very... already mo mentioned Estonia. There is like other. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we work actually. We work everywhere. We work for worldwide business and Russia, Asia, but not United States, not China, and not Canada. United States, Canada, because we don't have licenses, but we're looking for a workaround. We actually have some solutions. Currently, we're in process already. China, for obvious reasons, is yeah, uh, yeah. You, you cannot do work. You can work, but illegal. We are not working illegal. I, I don't believe in illegal uh, things. I don't believe in anonymous things. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I believe in regulations because only this is uh, only, only can safely work for investors, safely work for customers. If you do something anonymous, if you do something illegal, uh, you're going to be shut down. Super Fair enough. Users are user, user going to lose money. And what sure. also bad things about, for instance, for IDO, uh, it's anonymous uh, fundraising, and you don't know who are behind the project. Uh, they can uh, do a rug pull, take your, all your money, and uh, disappear. And you don't, you, you, you are protectless. You are defenseless against. So I believe in regulations. I believe in, that, for instance, China they ban ban crypto, yes, but but why? 
why why did the plan create because it's uh, unregulated totally unregulated may, in china. May, may, yeah. maybe they're like the they, like the social media restriction all of that's already in place in china maybe yes, they're trying yes. to come up with something on their own maybe another like blockchain on their own. i don't know they do they, yeah. they actually do it's uh, already in test in some I, I forgot city of china uh, they already test the chinese crypto cbdc uh, central bank digital currency of china uh, it, it's already in test in china so as soon as they try it and do a pilots and regulate it i think other well, cryptos can be allowed mr ante can you imagine that we have come from space wars in between countries to maybe crypto wars how interesting yeah. is that? <laughs> it's it's really interesting, and actually, I think uh, China will be number one. Oh. yes, because they already they already released the currency. It works and it's uh, tested in their city, and nobody else did it yet so far. And in Russia, we have a very bad experience with creating our uh, cryptocurrency. It was called Master Chain. It was a total disaster and fail. It's just a shame on us. There you go. <laughs> as, as we, you know, as we know, Kick uh, Ref has been quite a success, focusing on zero cost, multi-level marketing. In just yeah. a six-month duration, it has been able to acquire one million users. Right? That's huge. Yeah. Are you are you planning for any any strategy which can be successful at this? Yeah. Uh, yes. I, I will tell you just one fun story about Kick Ref. Actually, when we developed it and designed it, it was a small MVP, and we need somebody to test it, to see how it works. Uh, so, uh, do you hear me? Because I don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. There is dog barking. Okay. So, a fun story. <laughs> it's Those kind over there. <laughs> Meme dog. So, fun story about. Um, Kikrev is that we need some testers and we launched it. We didn't uh, public, uh, we didn't tell anybody. We just threw a link to Kikrev in our chat and said, hey guys, we need, uh, we need about 100 people to test it and see, to find some bugs and like this. So I threw the link and went to sleep. And on the, at the morning, I, <laughs> I woke up and I see 5,000 people registered in Kikrev and uh, <laughs> what's going on? What, must, must be some bug. But, it was uh, Malaysian people, but mm. it's were Malaysian people. Uh, they all registered and then on the next day followed Vietnam people, Vietnamese people. They were crazy about it. And next day we had about 12,000 people. And next day it was like 25,000 people. It was mm -hmm. crazy like, uh, it was just very, very interesting and weird. But uh, okay, we still have some, um, Usability problems with Kikref, and on the next month we're gonna fix it. Hmm. Because, for instance, if you register through the link, you come to Kikref site, but not to the exchange. You need to find exchange with Kikref. So, uh, uh, it allows Kikref to keep growing, but it brings very few people. No, not few. Quite enough, actually. Actually, half of our organic traffic comes from uh, for free from Kikref, but it can be boosted very, very much. And next. Next month, we're going to uh, do a next big upgrade with Kikrev. And on the next uh, stage of development, it's going to be uh, B2B, B2B solutions. So if you have a game or from crypto portal or cryptocurrency exchange, you can come to us and say, okay, I want Kikrev too. I want million of users in six months for free too. And we're going to say, okay, we have a B2B solution. Uh, we just take a small part of your revenue uh, from Kikrev. And that's it. They can easily integrate it into their business. That's the hmm. plan. I mean, it's interesting though, but your, your ecosystem is so unique and it has different kinds of services. But one thing that caught my eye is the Kick Academy, right? You know, crypto literacy is a thing. Shut up, Dogecoin. The crypto literacy is a thing that, you know, a lot of people require now right to get educated to get informed to to start investing how how far do you focus on the crypto academy uh, on the kick academy part uh, it's it's a very good question because uh, uh, as i see there's a lot of uh, 
deficit uh, in uh, education in crypto. Uh, in, especially in Russia, there is very, very few materials for self-education, for learning, and people uh, want to get into crypto, but, but they have no idea how. So Academy is, uh, is a pet project for us, but uh, I'm looking forward to turn, turn it into something big and something you, very uh, useful for community and to, both in Russian language and on foreign languages. Uh, next month, I think next month, we are launching a video like webinars and like this. Uh, it's a course of education of crypto starting from basic things and until more expert. Uh, if it will go well and if we'll see good uh, demand for high demand for it, we're going to extrapolate it for foreign languages. But we're going to keep developing academia and it's going to have a lot of useful and evergreen content. Uh, yeah. Maybe we'll save a lot of lives from losing money. Yeah, but for, so. for, for, for what it's worth, like the, the lockdown era is, is, has been the ed tech era. Ed tech industries are growing like right, left, center. So maybe if you could come up with an integration of Kick Academy, uh, you know, that would be huge. But yes, since, we yes, are, since, since we are mainly talking about your exchange, though, because that's something, that's your rock star, aren't you? Am I wrong <laughs> when I say that? That's your rock star? I do want to get your statement on what you think of the new meme coins that are coming out lately, like Doge and Shiva. And now, I don't know, Come Rocket is something that, you know, is an <laughs> NFT. <laughs> that's I don't know. Yeah. In expansion, the top crypto is like Bitcoin and Ethereum. What do you think? They yeah. come rockets. Uh, enough said. They come rockets. Okay. Uh, uh, we listed Shiba. We listed uh, Kishu Inu. And uh, with Kishu Inu, I have a good experience with guys. They are very friendly and open. With Shiba, I have very bad experience. Because, <laughs> uh, the, the, there is a woman who represents them, and she was so arrogant. It's crazy. Like, She's the god of crypto now. Okay, <laughs> they they found some. Okay, they got some. Uh, suddenly they rose and she saw her tokens and now she's the queen of crypto like this. <laughs> uh, but we still listed Shiba because our community asked. It's experiment. It's experiment and very possible we will delist it soon because. Uh, from what I see, what happens with the development community, it's. It's, um, I, I, I will not say it's a scam or something like this, but I do not think you can create a successful project with, uh, when you treat people like they do. So if they treat me like this, they treat all community the same way. So it's about those, it's fun. It's fun talking, it was made many, many years ago. And uh, they have some mysterious developers. Nobody knows who they are, <laughs> or some developer who maybe did develop it <laughs> a long time ago, but now he he forgot about those. He made just one statement uh, during class. like three years, once yeah. per three years or two years. He said, "What, what the fuck?" <laughs> to Elon, Elon yeah. Peters, if I'm not <laughs> mistaken. Uh, so do, I think Dosh is uh, just a long personal experiment to see how far he can send the cam rocket flight. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, uh, but a lot of people going to lose money. A lot of people going to lose money and they should stay away from you know, You know, I have a scale for that. Whenever there is a new crypto on the market, I have this scale called yeah, so on the topic, Warren Buffett to Elon Musk. How excited are you? How excited <laughs> are you? <laughs> so you're, you're, you're not a big fan. I, I can get that from your answer. You're not a big I'm fan. Not, I'm a big fan of something that have a real use case, as I said before, like Ethereum, like Bitcoin. Bitcoin is store of value long-term investment, Ethereum is a payment method, it's a payment way for a lot of, a lot of things like DEX and uh, DAPs. And I'm a big fan of Kik because Kik have uh, also a real use case. You can, you can pay trading commissions with it, you can decrease your commissions with token. In SuperUp, you're gonna have a lot of uh, other things too. 
deuce kick, but it's a secret for the moment. Uh, in, not in first version of Sura, but later. So yes, I, I believe in crypto that have u real use case. And no Dosh, no Shiba, they have no real use case. And nobody knows uh, which use case they're going to have and how, how of what quality it's going to be. Even if they launch something, uh, how many decks already lost money? A lot, a lot. So I, I, I'm not sure if it's a good idea to buy such coins. You know, yesterday I had like, I have another crypto journalist friend of mine. When I told him I'm interviewing you, he got excited and all. He's like, oh my God, tell him I'm a huge fan. His winter is so good. <laughs> and he said like, also do ask him, what do he, does he, I mean, I already know the answer, but I, he wanted to ask me this too. What do you think has the most potential out of all the cryptocurrencies? Uh, an answer is obvious, of course, it's kick. Yeah, because because we know what we do, we know how many use cases it has, we know that it's on the ground because you know it's uh, fell down after I show um, very very deep, like ninety nine percent, uh, and and it was uh, obvious because it had no use case. It just proves my words that token must have a, or crypto must have a real use cases. As yes. soon as we launch, as soon as we launch it, KKX and. Uh, People could use it, price started to grow. Like in January, it was uh, almost almost zero. Now it made about 40, X is, X 40, and on the high ATH this year, it was like about X82. And, wow. it, and okay. just the beginning, it, it's really just the beginning for, for us. Uh, but it's not a financial advice. So still, we can't promise. <laughs> Uh, profitability because if you do and you if you create a token if you promise like, it's gonna grow it's gonna be it's super good investment it, you're gonna earn a lot of money on it it instantly uh, under uh, American law and under different regulations it becomes a security token so if somebody says uh, like my my utility token gonna gonna make you rich it's not a utility token anymore. It's going to be security token is regulated differently, and a lot of exchanges are not going to list it, or they're going to have a lot of troubles from regulators. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You know what? What else can I say, Mr. Ante? All you know, just break a leg out there, go on full force. You know, I, I'm pretty much sure a lot of fanboys. When we next time meet, I'm probably gonna get a lot more fanboy questions for you to yes, answer. Uh, so always welcome. And actually, um, I'm always talking to community on our Telegram groups, on Twitter, like this. And I'm pretty open person, maybe because we have just about one one uh, hundred thousand people. In community it's not not too much i can handle it maybe <laughs> we'll have millions millions are gonna be a bit uh, all you gotta do is yeah. tweet all you gotta do is tweet <laughs> no no actually i'm i'm, in a, I'm answering in a telegram public telegram, telegram group wow. yes i'm yeah i'm handling it I'm wow. the community. Wow. <laughs> which, which very few founders do so fun fun questions are always always welcome and we have a support that works 24 hours, seven days per week. And they always answer to all adequate, adequate questions. If, if there is toxic questions, of course, of rudeness, they, they ban people. But so this is because, because of this, our community is so friendly and open and comfortable. So if you're not part of our community, please join, join us. Dope, dope, dope. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> There you go. There you have it. The man himself has spoken on an exclusive interview with us. Always remember public. This is the coin Republic. And if you want to get educated and informed in a, in a interactive way, and of course, if you're a fanboy, always send those <laughs> questions. We're going to have ad time maybe later when he is free and it's all blown up even more than now. We're going to have him again. You're, you're going to commit me. You're going to come back. Come on. <laughs> yes, I will. I will. You thank, thank you so much for the interview and hope next time we're going to talk. Uh, let me prove that our plan worked as, as, as uh, supposed to do.
Fantastic. Dro- uh, uh, dr- uh, drop us a mail when you visit India, though. We're going to have this real time if it's possible. Yeah, actually, I've been to India many times and I love India. There so, you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> gonna be, I was going to be very happy when I come to India, but at the moment, there is uh, this pandemic, pandemic yeah, situation. Let, let, and I, let, I physically cannot can arrive. Can arrive. It's not allowed. That's all you gotta wait if after pandemic we're gonna have an exclusive one-on-one interview with that guy <laughs> offline. There you go, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being a part of this. Do like, share, subscribe, and always remember, go be a part of the Kick ecosystem. Their super apps gonna it's it's under development. It's gonna be still on full-fledged mode soon. Go to their website. Go to the internet. Become a part of their <laughs> Telegram group. Whatever you gotta have to do. Just become a part of this revolution. <laughs> See you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. How do you say Thank what? You. What do you say? Bye in Russian. Paka. 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 Okay, there you go. Yeah, right. That's right. I'll learn. I'll, I'll grow on it. I'll grow on it. Don't you worry. Okay, do do. <laughs> okay. Right, See you. See you. Bye bye.